What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. This morning I woke up and I just felt like making a video reflecting on 2023 and looking ahead at 2024. I had a different video planned for today and I just didn't feel like making it. So we'll come back to that another time. But today we're gonna take a look at my two businesses, private practice skills and my therapy practice, seeing clients for therapy and kind of observe what sort of goals did I make for 2023? How did they pan out? What were the like wins and losses of the year? And then look ahead to 2024 and see what sort of plans I have to make. And I'm gonna bring you along with me. So I'll share a little bit of context as I stepped into 2023 in my personal life because I really feel like that has influenced my businesses so much over the years. So as we kicked off 2023, my household had lived in five places during the four years prior to that. I know, and I hate moving. I hate moving. So it takes me a good long while to regroup after a move to feel like I'm myself again. Another important and very influential aspect of the four years of my life leading up to 2023 was I got pregnant twice and I had those babies and raised them. And I also made a choice at that time to have part-time childcare while I stayed at home the rest of the time. So that was taking up a lot of my brain energy if you will. But in summer 2022, my household made a move into what we sure hope will be our forever home or something close to it. So entering 2023, I was feeling literally settled into the home and like psychologically settling into a space rather than being in a kind of perpetual state of like, we're moving. <laughs> and at that point, my daughters were one and a half and three and a half. So it felt like I was maybe just starting to exit that initial fog of being a parent. So as I entered 2023, I felt like the dust was finally settling on some of these personal matters and I could focus more on me, which included my professional life. But as you'll see in this video, Video, there were a lot of things in 2023 that did not go the way I expected them to, even though 2023 was still a really good year. So let's talk about what some of my actual plans were as I stepped into 2023. Leading up to 2023, my content for private practice skills was almost exclusively related to running a private practice. And it was the beginning of 2023 that I made a conscious decision that I was going to start branching out into additional topics keeping the private practice stuff in there as well, but maybe focusing a bit more on clinical items as well. And I also had a broad interest in creating content around social justice related items within our field. I know that's a broad topic, but there's a lot of things that could fit in there and incorporating all of that into my YouTube channel. Another plan that I explicitly made for myself going into 2023 was to do more interviews for my videos for this channel. Another explicit plan that I made for 2023 was to launch a membership group for folks interested in private practice. The idea of that group was that it would be a highly affordable membership model where folks could enter or exit at any time. And as far as my goals for my therapy practice in 2023, I wanted to keep it pretty low key, kind of status quo. Things were working. I work very part-time in private practice just one day a week and I wanted to keep it that way. And generally those were my plans going into 2023 professionally. So now that you've heard those, let's talk about some of my wins and flops of 2023. I'd say a big win above all the other wins, and I don't know what this says about my values, was that my general work ethic was so strong in 2023. There were a lot of things that interrupted my schedule in 2023 and somehow I just kept going. And sometimes that meant staying up really late at night to get stuff done. And if we take a look at my income, my numbers for 2023 were also definitely a win. My income held steady and kind of increased just a little bit. It kept up with inflation at least. Another win of 2023 is that it was the first year since having babies that I genuinely wanted to to see more therapy clients. I felt really excited anytime there was an opening in my schedule to go ahead and fill it with a new client right away. Another win of 2023 is I've definitely upped my game on this channel. Whether you've noticed it or not, I'm aware of it. My video production skills and my editing skills have improved. And I'd say even the amount of time and effort that I put into scripting a video has also improved. And another super random win of 2023 is, I guess I accidentally started a podcast. And I'm not saying that like my podcast has like blown up or anything along those lines, but that was a fun win of 2023. We'll come back to that when we talk about my plans for 2024. So let's talk now about some of my flops for 2023. 
2023. And I don't wanna call any of these a fail. It's just, it's just flops, they're flops. Now this one's a personal item, but it influenced every aspect of my life, very much including my professional life. And that's just that I did not anticipate just how challenging this phase of parenting would be, at least for me. This has been the hardest phase of parenting so far for me, except for when I was pregnant, because for me, being pregnant was so much harder than, you know, being not pregnant with small children. My daughter dropped her nap in August, and it was also around that time that both of my girls would start waking up really early in the morning, like 5.30 or earlier. It suddenly just like hit me that I've genuinely felt like I could would not sustain parenting to the extent that I was and stay healthy. And I ended up working like almost every evening until 11 or 12. I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist or a therapist to know that that's not a sustainable schedule. By November, I ended up caving and switching from part-time childcare to full-time childcare. That was the best decision ever. That change did it. I feel so much better. <laughs> it is what it is. Nobody failed, but wow, I did not anticipate just how difficult it would be for me to be a parent in this phase of my girls' lives. Another flop is that I did not wind up doing very many interviews for this channel. I think it was maybe three interviews or four if you count my interview with my spouse, which was super fun. For whatever reasons, the videos that I've created where I've interviewed folks tend to have fewer views than my other videos. When I have a guest on, on my channel, I want to kind of like roll out the red carpet for them and give them the royal treatment. And if the videos are not getting as many views as my other videos, I kind of feel bad. And if you're a close follower of my work, another flop of 2023 is that that membership that I talked about did not happen. Now, I definitely dove in head first into making this membership, but as I said earlier, August happened, my daughter dropped her nap, and I just had to figure it out professionally, and I just completely did not follow through on that membership. Someday, I would love to come back to it, but it hasn't happened. Another flop of 2023, particularly once we hit that point in August where my daughter dropped her nap, I dropped the ball on all layers of professional development. I shouldn't say all layers. I'm in a consult group. I consult in addition to just that group as needed, but I wasn't going above and beyond to edify my professional development skills after August. So that's definitely a flop of 2023. And as we go into 2024, something I'd like to structure differently about my life. Now, I know I referred to all of those as flops, but I don't see them as failures. They just feel like modifications that were necessary and appropriate given the unforeseen things that came along in 2023. When I look back at it, I feel like 2023 was overall a success. Okay, all of that said, let's talk a little bit about my plans going into 2024. The number one plan I have for 2024 is to be flexible and make adjustments as things come. Make plans, but hold them very loosely. Let them fall out of my hands anytime they need to. That's my big plan for 2024. So my continued plan for 2024, as has been true across all now five and a half years since starting private practice skills, is to to keep releasing YouTube content as well as now the podcast and approach it as a craft. I want to just keep making better and better content. Another big one that I really, really want to emphasize in 2024 is emphasizing professional development. I am realizing it's been 12 years since I graduated and stuff is updated. There's new stuff that's come up since then and I want to learn those things. And a huge goal of 2024, which I have alluded to already as I described my mom difficulties of 2023, is to use work hours for work and use evenings for whatever the heck I wanna use evenings for. And to throw in a personal item in my 2024 goals, I'm planning on taking more me time. The last several years, I have been getting me time, don't get me wrong, but I'm noticing more and more that I was tending to just squeeze it in whenever I could find it, sort of in real time. But I really haven't had like scheduled me time. So that's something I am doing differently in 2024. And I'd like to share something that I'm not planning 
for 2024. Now this is something that's specific to me, my individual personality and things like that. So this is not prescriptive in any way whatsoever, but something that I'm planning on not doing for 2024 is setting overly detailed goals. I have a very high work ethic. And so whether I set goals or not, I'm going to be getting a lot of work done. If I set too many goals that are too detailed across the year, then what can end up happening is those goals end up taking too much space in my brain. And I have this new narrative in my mind about how well, I really kind of want to go over here and do this thing, but I set that goal over there and I'm not doing it. So I'm falling short in some way. So if I don't have too many goals and I don't have too many details around those goals, then I can just feel free to go ahead and do whatever I want, which in the long run tends to be something that I feel good about after the fact and that aligns with things that I'd say are overall goals for me, if that makes sense. Whew, well, that about sums up my plans for 2024. I don't know, maybe it sounds like a lot, maybe it doesn't sound like a whole lot, who knows? But hopefully you enjoyed coming along for the ride with me. And before we close, I'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Therapy Notes helps with all of your practice management needs from scheduling to notes to billing. They have a HIPAA secure telehealth platform and so much more. If you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Well, thanks for joining me in my reflections about 2023 and my plans for 2024. Are you a big planner? Do you make big goals for the year? I really don't. This is all the time I spent thinking about 2024 and then I'll probably be done until 2025. But I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.